This is our Kopi O. It's basically our like version of the Americano. <laughs> the flavor is a little bit like sort of harsher, it's more bitter, it's stronger. Because I think they use this uh, coffee bean called I think Robusta, as opposed to Arabica. Uh, they just throw in a little bit of sugar to sort of soften the blow of the bitterness. Mm. Right, today we are here at this restaurant called Wong So Si. And they have only two stalls. One is selling nasi lemak, and the other is selling what we call yi jiao mian, which is fish paste noodle or fish ball noodle. And this one is recommended by our local Malaccan viewers, and you can see that the setting is really very simple. And those who are eating are just locals. It's my first time trying this out noodle as well. This particular version, I've had fish ball noodles before, but not the Malacca version. Uh, apparently, they come in either a dry form or a soup form. So let yeah, us go ahead and quickly order. Alright, because the store only offers two variants, either the soup or the dry, obviously we each got one. Quite yeah. got the soup, soup variant, kuei tiao with rice vermicelli, whereas I got the yellow noodles with kuei tiao. I think the dry version is more uh, interesting in a way because mm -hmm. They add on a myriad of sauces, some pork lard oil, maybe sesame oil with soy sauce mix and then they added some dark soy sauce. Mm. But the key point lies in this dialogue of their homemade sambal right here, which they say is extremely important if you're eating a dry version, you're gonna mix it all up together. Before we start mixing the dry, let's try a sip of Quetz broth. Mm. There's a sweetness, inherent sweetness to it. Yeah. Very simple broth. It's exactly like fishball noodles broth. Very simple flavors. And there's a savoriness within. And also with some peppery. Mm, yeah, there's some pepperiness. And you can see actually it's a lot of ingredients. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. There's a fish ball and the yeah. big one and the small one. The big one, one is homemade. They made it themselves by hand. The small one, they told me it's from the factory. Mm. La. And also some fish, fish cake. cake. Yeah. yeah. And then also some fuzhou, fuzhou, fish yeah, fish fried bean curd. Yeah. And also some... I think slices of pork, pork? as well. Yeah. So it's very interesting. They've got this uh, mm. fried shallots on top to give it that fragrance. So mm. quite quickly go ahead and try the noodles before they get soggy. Mm. How is it? The vermicelli is cooked well. And you can notice the kuei tiao is actually thicker than what you usually have. The kuei tiao is very soft and smooth. Yeah, let me try. Mm. When it goes with the fried shallots, it gives you that fragrance as well. It's a very simple bowl of noodles. I would say it's a very good version uh, of fish bowl noodles. Because the broth still has that flavour that the noodles are able to carry through. Okay, I'm going to toss the dried version first. <laughs> it has turned into a cup. I'm going to add a little bit of the soup on to try and loosen it up a little bit. Oh, you can see all the sauces have dripped to the bottom. <laughs> Oh, get that sambal mixed up real nice. Hmm. Quite spicy sambal. Sambal is pretty good. The flavors are now to the point where you could taste the flavor of the kuei tiao itself. That little bit of that um, so-called sourness on the kuei tiao, mm -hmm. that, that flavor that kuei tiao has. I think the way to eat this is probably you gotta drink some of the soup to give flavor. Mm, yeah, the soup is good. I prefer the soup version because you get the sweetness from the broth to there with the fried shallots and everything. Let me try the handmade fish broth. Mm, fish broth is very decent. You can definitely tell it's handmade. When you're buying it, it's sort of like chop, 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 chop. Mm. Yeah, it's not the super bouncy type. And the taste actually is of mild sweetness with some peppery. Mm, but I do taste a little bit of that fishiness. Not necessarily a bad thing, it depends on your personal preference. Ultimately, I think this is a very nostalgic feeling, very simple noodles, but I think they are done relatively well, mm. especially the soup version. So we're gonna finish this up and then we'll move on to the next spot, but let's swap and let Kret eat mine while I eat hers. <laughs> It's nearing 12 p.m. and the sun is super hot. It's melting my face off. We are at this spot. I think our first uh, street food spot of the day is called Ta Zhong Popia, and they sell popia, which is like a rice wrap with kama inside, lah. 
right behind me there are actually a lot of people already queuing up and actually they are not exactly open yet you can see that the gates are still sort of like 90% closed and if you just take a peek inside you can see the lady boss I assume busy like packing rows and rows of papier and then wrapping up in that plastic it's better for you to pre-order the popia like a day in advance to guarantee that you will get your popia. So for those who didn't pre-order, then you just queue and then hopefully you get some lah. Oh, hot! Finally we got our popia. Yay! <laughs> oh. hey, it's still hot. The yeah. lady boss just make it. Mm. You can see the colour of the sauce through the skin. Let's try this. Mmm! Spicy! You can taste the sweetness from the stir-fry kikama and the crunchy from the cucumber and veggie. And there's uh, also the fragrance from the jiaozha, the pot lard. Overall, the taste is quite balanced. I quite like it. I like the Malacca version of the burrito because they don't cut it. So it's sort of like a mini burrito. You can just hold it and eat it. It's very easy for you to eat off the street. Lah. So let's go. This looks really exciting. Mmm. Mmm. Very good crispy pork lard. Skin is relatively thin. Just because I saw the lady, they put on two layers of the skin so that I believe um, is to prevent the the juice from the hikama and the sauce from penetrating through the skin and the skin will become soggy. Vegetables are crunchy. I think they added like um, shredded eggs inside as well. And if you get a bite of those shredded eggs, you can actually taste the egginess. Mm. Pretty well balanced. A lot better than... There's another very popular spot in Malacca. I guess you guys know which one it is, like, the other one. That one is really thick skin. Like crazy thick skin. And when we tried it, I felt that the pork lard was overpowering. Uh. This one it felt just right. Um, I think at four bucks, a lot more worthy than the other store. Uh. The other store is six bucks. Now I finished this up. This is the second piece. And then we'll move on to the next three food. Okay, I have some putu piring. Under the scorching sun, our hunt for street food continues with me melting. We are now in front of Putu Piring Malacca on Jalan Tengkara. Putu Piring is actually a Malay snack. It's a rice flour cake that has gula malacca inside. You can see over there the answer is putting on the first layer of rice flour, put on some gula malacca in the middle, and then top it up with another layer of rice flour. It smooths it off, and then they put it onto this plate, and the auntie will put on a, like a seeding cloth before turning it around and putting it onto the steamer and cover with this cone shaped cover to steam for a few minutes after when it's ready, it's moved onto a banana leaf and then it sprinkles some fresh grated coconut floss on top Again, this is a spot that people recommend you to pre-order a day in advance because they usually sell out really quickly they only open for like 2 hours I think from 1 o'clock to 3.30 or something So we'll go with first our order right here 5 putu piring and the sun is really hot, it's melting my face off I've turned into a lobster again Let's just eat this in the car. Okay, ah. hey guys, back in the car. It's really hot. Okay, let's quickly open it up and try this out. Whoa, I can literally smell the fragrance of Putu Piring. Okay, I'm gonna grab one of them. This one right over here. Oh, it's still warm. Nice. I noticed that the, the coconut floss has sort of fallen off, so I'm gonna grab a little bit and place it on top. <laughs> okay, and this, see this? These are the Gulam Laka. It has sort of like uh, melted and some of it is soaked through. And I love this very cushy feeling of the Putu Piring. Look at this. It's still soft and nice and fragrant. Super excited. Okay, let's try this out. You will taste the flower fragrance. It's cushy, it's soft, not too dry. The gula malaka is not fully melted. You can still taste there's a little bit of this granules of gula malaka. It's sweet, a little bit of that caramel flavor. And when you get a bit of that santan, you get a bit of that saltiness. Okay, I'm gonna take another bite uh, for a better assessment of the flavors and the texture again. Hmm. 
for the Chinese, it tastes like fat gold. The muffin looking thing, the pink colored ones, it has exactly that taste with Gula Melaka inside. I would say it's pretty decent, but it did feel a little bit drier than I was expecting. Nonetheless, at 150 per piece, I would say it's worth the price. Pretty value for money, to be honest. Yeah. Alright guys, that's it for our Putu Piring uh, exploration today. Uh, we're gonna maybe take a break, you know, uh, rest for a bit and then we'll see you later for dinner. We are most likely gonna have some noodles, I think one time in Malacca style. So stay tuned and see you in a bit. Bye bye! Alright guys, we are now at this coffee that I'm called Chop Ping Chong. And this is where you find a very, very famous wantami spot that is open at night. The wantami has the same name, Bing Chong Trading, I think. But a lot of the locals, they call it Shaking Head Wantami. Because the uncle who cooks the wantami, every now and then he does this very unique head shake uh, when he's cooking the noodles. The Kopi Dam only has three stalls. One of them sells chicken wings. The other one sells O Tian, which is oyster omelette. And last one is the one that sells uh, wantami. A lot of people are eating their wantami. A lot of them are queuing up to do takeouts. First off, Malacca wantami is quite different from what we get in KL because ours is the black version with like dark soy sauce. The ours is a white version. It looks similar to Sarawak Kolomi la. The cooking method seems to be the same as what we see in like other places, the wantami. The uncle starts off by cooking the noodles and then it goes through a cold water bath called Tao Lang Ho. I believe that is to stop the noodles from overcooking. And then right before they toss the noodles, you will go through another round of very quick dip into the hot water to sort of heat up the noodles and then they toss it in their own unique sauce and they put on some vegetables, some lean cut red coloured char siu and then it's further sprinkled with a spoonful of lean pork. I think that is probably their magic ingredient. Very simple plate of noodles which is why I like this is exactly why it's good about wonton mee basically. They look so simple. You've got all these beautiful strands of homemade noodles here so I'm gonna quickly toss it up and then take a bite mm. Mm. the first thing that hits you is an undertone of the flavor of the lard oil and then you get a bit of savoriness from probably a mixture of light soy sauce the noodles, they are bouncy but they are not the KL Wantami type where there is like lye water. It's a little bit closer to the Sarawak Kolomi. Not exactly Sarawak Kolomi, it's a little bit chewier and bouncier but it also does not have the alkaline taste. Mmm, it's soft, it's tender but it's got that bounce, that chew to go along with it. Mmm. This pork is very flavorful. A little bit leaner with some fat. It's not a super fatty type. I quite like this. The flavor is quite intense on the meat pork. You've got this very nice mixture of like soy sauce together with again a lard oil, which gives it that very nice saltiness, but not overly salty. So when you pair with the noodle, which is comparatively milder in flavor, it's still packed full of flavors, just slightly milder, you get a very nice contrast. As for the char siu, I didn't really taste the flavour because it's a very lean type of char siu. La. I think it's more there for the texture since the noodle is pretty fragrant already. Okay, now, there's a way uh, the Malaccas eat it uh, and they give me this bottle of chilli sauce. Apparently, they say you should toss the chilli sauce oh, you should toss the chilli sauce into the noodles. Apparently, with the chilli sauce, it really elevates the flavour. This chilli sauce is homemade, so let's put a healthy amount. Okay, let's toss it up. Oh, look at this noodles. Glorious, it's turning red. I hope it's not too spicy. Okay, nice. Let's go. Hmm. It tastes in another plate of noodles. Whatever you had before, it's lost. What you get in return is a pretty spicy noodle with salty flavor and I believe a little bit of tang. Maybe they added some lime in the chili sauce. Now, I think this is personal preference. I personally prefer the original version, the one without the chili because you could taste the layers and even like sort of the delicate flavor of that sauce mixture in that noodle. Mm. Wonton is surprisingly quite generous in feeling. The marinade is actually similar to the rest of the wontons that we have had. 
Uh, it's got a little bit of pepperiness, saltiness within. So, so like, I would call it like a, like a more... It's probably not the right word for it. I would say like Ajinomoto feel. But I don't think it's bad. It does taste a little bit heavy salted though. Mm. Yeah, I didn't notice the second wonton. The skin is... Uh, it's undercooked lah. <laughs> so there could be some inconsistencies. But other than that, I would say very decent bowl of wonton meat. Actually, I quite like this version that Malacca has. Anyway, I'm going to finish this and then we'll go into plating time segment. Guys, you see why I said apparently Kred is not hungry? She's sitting right now because she saw me film the segment. And actually, the wonton meat is really quite good lah. So, yep, she got a plate for herself. Okay, let's just start with the scoring uh, for the food that we've eaten today. Before we start, I need to qualify something. The food that we try today are generally very simple food. I would say the flavors are pretty straightforward. It's a very simple fare. The ingredients are pretty straightforward. Yes. So, bear that in mind, okay? <laughs> Let us start with the yu jiao mian. Quite, what do you think? You, you think you, you, you quite enjoy it? Yeah, actually I quite enjoy the yu jiao mian because the broth itself is sweet, savoury and peppery. Yeah, it's balanced quite well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, I would prefer the soup version. The dry version, I'll be very honest, the taste is very mild, it's like overly mild. Mm. I was actually quite surprised lah. Because when I saw the amount of sauce that they throw in, I was like, it's got to have some form of flavour, but surprisingly, no. It's really very nostalgic. It really feels like you are eating it. You know, a food that you'll find in your canteen mm -hmm. when you were a kid and you were studying. Yeah. That is how I'll put it. It's really a taste of nostalgia, I believe, for a lot of local Malacans, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And with that being said, this Yu Jiao Mian spot will score an honorable mention on the gourmet plate. That means that it's decent, it's definitely worth a try if you happen to be in Malacca City mm. because I think it's one of the unique foods in Malacca. Yeah, only in Malacca. Yeah. Okay, next up, Popia. Ta Chong Popia. Okay, as I mentioned earlier, we have tried the other spot as well, the Bunga Raya Popia. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say personally, I find that hands down, Ta Chong Popia wins. Uh, not just by price point, by flavor balance as well. I know this Malacca Popia, the skin is thicker and they use pork lard. I think Ta Chong uses pork lard very smartly in a way where it's very balanced. The pork lard won't overpower. It wouldn't overpower, yeah. Bunga Raya one, it's, it's just pork lard, like you're like eating pork lard mm. with a side of popia. That's how it feels, and their skin is also very thick. Mm. That's it. I still find that the Malacca popia has a relatively thicker skin compared to what we find in Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. The thicker the skin, the more obvious it is going to become, mm. whereas you are progressing through the popia. Mm. You are going to start tasting the flavor of the skin, or in this case, the lack of flavor of the skin. And after the flavours of the rest of the things dissipate, you are still stuck with a relatively chewy skin that is sort of flavourless. I think that is pretty detrimental if you look at it from an objective standpoint. Yeah. And with that being said, Ta Chong Popia scores an honourable mention on the Gome Pay as well, which means it is pretty decent. I would recommend la, to try it out if you happen to be in Malacca City. Yeah. yeah. Third spot, still peering Malacca. Also very decent. The way it was done, all the basic flavours are there. But I do find that it lacks a little bit more of that fragrance for the putu piring. Yep. And I think palm sugar... It tastes like a... Like more like... Brown sugar? Yeah, mixture. more like brown sugar. I think it lacks mm. a little bit more of that smokiness, that, that punch. Uh, which, yeah, which which we were expecting. Mm. The sunburn as well, although you could taste the saltiness, it lacks a little bit of fragrance. Mm. Yeah, that said, I'm not saying it's bad. Yeah. It's still pretty decent mm -hmm. for Putu Piring. And at the price point of 1 ringgit 50 cents, I think it's alright. Mm. And with that being said, Putu Piring Malacca scores also an honorable measure mm. on the Gourmet Play, which means rather decent. Yeah. If you happen to be in Malacca City, do try it out. Final spot, the Wantan Mi, Shaking Head Wantan Mi. I think probably the best performing dish today. Yeah, actually I, I find it's really done very well. The noodles are house-made and it's done really well. No alkaline flavour, not overly bouncy, but still got a good bounce and chew. And the flavour balance is also done really well. Savoury with some form of like, like umami to it. The addition of chilli sauce is interesting, but I think it's not a personal preference. Huh? I prefer it as it is without the chilli sauce. Yeah. And with that being said, uh, Shaking Head Wantan Mi scores an okay on the gourmet plate, which means it is some good quality wantan mi right there. Absolutely worth trying out. It's a unique dish that you can only find in Malacca. And I guess that concludes our food vlog for today. Uh, hopefully you have enjoyed the entire segment of Malacca with us because we have enjoyed filming as well and trying all sorts of different foods. I know we didn't cover a lot of Malacca foods. Uh, we have too little time. We will definitely visit Malacca City again in the future. 
Alright, well, I'm gonna look to finish this and go back to rest. Yeah, it's really tiring. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, see you next week. Bye.